Hi, everyone. This is David from CSR Insights. Thank you for joining us in having conversations about good matters that improve people's lives. Welcome to Lifelong Learning with Engineer Ophelia M. So. Hi, Mrs. So. Good afternoon po. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, lifelong Learning. Lifelong Learning is our journey from the time we started to learn to the time that our sunset days. So we have to continue to learn because by learning from the time we were small to the time that we are already brought to our end, we become better citizens. We become better people. Without that continued learning, we will not uh, survive this world, especially this world now of social media and everything. We have to learn. Di po ba? Opo. Missy, so in our past episodes, you mentioned that meron tayong mga required na learnings. Meron ding mga kahit ayaw natin, kailangan natin matutunan. Maybe later, our guest, si Doc Jackin, can share her insights. Kayo po, can you refresh our audience? Ano ba yung mga required? At ano yung mga kailangan talaga natin matutunan kahit hindi ano? Uh, uh, yung mandatory po from the end, we have kindergarten to up to at grade 12 for now. Then mm -hmm. after that, we want to continue. We go to college education, then university, then then whatever therapeutic studies that you need to do, mm -hmm. especially for uh, our guest here because she's a doctor. Then oh, yeah, she can discuss it. So, so, ladies and gentlemen, and our guest and for today is Dr. Jacqueline M. So Kabahog. She's a gastroenterologist. Doc, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for having me. Oh, Doc, uh, Mrs. So, tanangin ko na, ha? saan ka ba mga affiliated na hospital? Para ngayon pa lang alam na ng audience natin, saan ka nila pwedeng puntahan? Um, my hospitals include Pope John Paul II Hospital and Medical Center in Las Piñas, um, Asian Hospital, that's the one in Alabang naman po. And then I have um, visiting status as well at uh, Medical Center Paranaque, LPDH, as well as Perpetual Hospital. Okay, sige. So sa mga merong cases ano, regarding uh, internal medicine, uh, especially yung gastroenterology, just go uh, to doctors uh, to Dr. Jack's clinic. Mrs. So, uh, very special to, no? Baka hindi ba alam ng audience natin, hindi pa nga nila alam. Sino ba itong guest natin? Ba't natin siya ginest? Kaano-ano mo ba siya? Uh, siya po yung lovely daughter ko. O yun. Uh, eldest ko po. Eldest yes. ko po. Kaya medyo unique po itong experience na to for both of us. This is the, the first time. I've been interviewing people. I have been interviewed by a lot of people. Uh, she has been interviewed by a lot of people, but this is the first time I am interviewing her. At, and I hope she will be comfortable with the questions that I will ask her. She's smiling now. Mm -hmm. So uh -huh. what do you think? Do you think yeah, people? hopefully. Okay, yeah. very good. Uh -huh. Mrs. So, I'll ask na rin si, si Jacqueline. Pag sinabing lifelong learning, for you, Doc, ano ba siya? Um, especially for me in the medical field, that's definitely something that is expected because um, part of our requirement to be able to renew our license actually mm. is to attend um, conventions, um, all these... Um, sorry, nawala ako. So All right. these con conventions needed for our CPD units mm -hmm. because, you know, uh, especially in the field of, for example, inflammatory bowel disease, there are new medications that are coming up, new therapeutic um, regimens that become uh, eventually recommended. And even in the field of therapeutic um, endoscopy, there are new um, accessories that are being promoted. Um, as we learn from our, you know, previous mistakes, or for example, from our patients, of course, before. Mm -hmm. Missy, so, uh, meron ka bang gusto itanong kay Jacqueline? Kasi gusto ka nang itanong, ito ba yung gusto niya talaga? But sa iyo, uh, na-influence mo ba siya in a way to, you know, to choose the 
medicine field? I, I think the influence was from her dad. Kasi siya yung may gusto talaga ng medicine siya. Ako, whatever she wanted sana, yun yun. She wanted, she's very good in arts. So she wanted to be a sculptor. So ngayon, sculptor siya ng tao. Hindi ng kahon. <laughs> so pero, I would like to ask her, may ubigay ni Dr. Raka Isil on our way to your medical enrollment. She asked you, are, are you really going to take up medicine? It's a very difficult course. Yeah. How did you feel when she asked me that? I mean, because it's a common question naman po. Any, actually, um, anybody who first takes up the mantle of having to go through this um, medical journey, so to speak, lagi naman yan yung tinatanong, if ever, are you sure? Because it's, It will take years um, of studying, hours away from your your family, things like that. Pero kasi at that time, I've already um, committed to really pushing through with um, my medical studies. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, ilang uh, taon, yung sir, pag-aaral ba na yan, ma'am? Para yes, sa akin, mm-hmm. medyo matagal yung studies eh. Mm-hmm. For teachers, before naging... Uh, ano siya, fellow before naging gastroenterologist including the the exams after the training kaya medyo nakakaan ba na nandun lahat ang buhay na sa pag-aaral bago kasi it was important to me na maging magaling na magaling siyang doktor kasi sabi ko it's life and death mm. di ba so syempre makonsensya ka kung may nangyari dahil hindi ka ready sa ganon. Ganon po ang pananaw mm-hmm. ko. It's nagawa naman po ng anak ko. Na ganon. Kasi very studious naman siya. Very dedicated sa sa pag-aral niya. Minsan walang tulog. Ganon. Mm-hmm. Diba? Mm-hmm. Diba? Pag, yeah. Ganon sir. Pag sinusundo ko siya from the school, Grabe, I would uh, bring the food, then she would take the food inside the cart, then after after eating, she would sleep, so that when she arrives home, she would study again. Mm-hmm. Ganon siya ka, ano, ganon siya ka focus on her studies. Ganon. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Mrs. So for sharing that. For uh, to study? Yes. Um, I mean, high school was pretty easy and, and I know, grade school, obviously. Um, it really got serious, of course, in med school because um, you're learning basically all these different subjects at the same time. And of course, if you don't pass a certain subject, you cannot move on to the next year. So th- mm-hmm. there was definitely a lot more pressure at that point, especially since you know, you basically know each other already, um, especially your classmates. So um, you kind of put pressure on each other. And at the same time, we supported each other. We had group studies. We would quiz each other. Um, a lot of the times, we would even go to the homes of our friends to study. And that was really helpful. So I think that made it easier for me, the fact that there was Um, a sense of community. Mm-hmm. So that's how you equal to be the dedicated doctor that you're now. I think so. Uh, I think more of uh, that focus more on my studying habits. For um, being dedicated per se, I think that once that you're exposed already to the wards and you you see mm-hmm. what your patients really have to go through, all their suffering, things like that, you always want to be able to help them and mm-hmm. the best way to help them is of course be knowledgeable of how to manage their yeah. their cases and to properly explain to them educate them as well at the same time so that you know they're not just scared about what they're going through yeah uh thank you mrs so, doc jack usually ang patients pag pumunta sa clinic mo tama ka nga no minsan clueless sila or sometimes yeah. they're afraid na ano na bang nangyari sa kanila 
Uh, paano mo sila pinapakalma? How do you educate them? Kasi it's very complicated eh. Um, so for me po kasi, I actually printed out a bunch of illustrations to be able to oh, explain mm-hmm. to my patients. So I have an illustration of the um, gut actually to explain to them. Okay, so for example, if you have pancreatitis, this is your pancreas. This is the part that's inflamed right now. We have to hydrate you, things like that. And then of course, if it's when it comes to procedures, I would also explain to them Um, this is what the procedure looks like. This is what the scope looks like. This is how far we are going into your stomach. And from there, usually, you know, they would proceed with other questions like what are the risks? Um, are, am I going to be sedated? Things like that. So that exchange actually makes them more comfortable. Mm-hmm. Pero minsan, di ba, meron na sila mga baon na, na knowledge. Either nakuha nila sa social media, nakuha sa kapitbahay. Yes. Paano mo, yeah. uh, you know, tinatama? Um, I would, of course, ask them what they have already read on the internet. Mm-hmm. And um, I would explain to them, you know, from the basics pa lang po so that they won't uh, misinterpret whatever that they read on the internet. Unfortunately, uh, my doctor Google naman po talaga, no? Oh, Some yeah. patients not only listen to Google but also to their Um, neighbors, for example, mm-hmm. which are a lot of the times, you know, anecdotal studies. That's why um, some patients are afraid to um, push through, for example, with dialysis because of all the horror stories that they oh, yeah, hear. Yeah. So what happens is that these patients end up going into dialysis in the later stage na instead mm-hmm. na sana na um, manage na yung kanyang kidney injury So mm-hmm. that we will only be able to um, dialyze these patients for a few sessions, and after that they can be weaned off. Um, yun ang yari. Nagtutuloy tuloy niya. Tapos mm-hmm. talagang end stage kidney disease na talaga yung patient, and mm-hmm. they would have to go through it for the rest of their lives. If not, naman po, it can also occur that, um, for example, these patients, um, last minute na lang po sila nag ano decide na mag a dialysis. Yeah. Pero they were already starting to deteriorate. Like their blood pressure, bumabagsak na. They have all these mm-hmm. electrolyte imbalances. Mm-hmm. So, uh, unfortunately, there is a risk for them to um, die because of this condition. So, mm-hmm. yun yung nakukuhang stories kasi yun yung mga kumakalat na stories sa mga patients. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why they get scared. That's why it's always important to Um, properly educate them about prevention and about timely uh, management of their um, condition. Okay. Mrs. So, uh, so and, and doc- uh, yes, may mga patients siya na super nervous, especially may, mayroon siyang patient last August na inoperahan. Grabe! Hanggang, hanggang tinutulak doon sa operating room, <laughs> holding hands pa rin sa kanya eh. Kasi oh, okay. gusto niya siya gumawa. Eh, kailang surgery yun. Hindi naman, ay, hindi naman endoscopy yun. Mm-hmm. Siya, pag surgery na, iba na yun. So, so pero gusto niya may bridge pa. Oh. Buti mm-hmm. na lang dumating siya. Tumatakbo siya pa, para lang maihatid doon sa... Yun yung, yun yung oh, commitment na... na dapat makita natin sa doctors. Mhm. Mrs. So kayo, meron kayong ano eh, meron kayong special line kay, kay doc ano. So how do you uh, ikaw naman sa sarili niyo po ano? Paano mo ina-advocate yung ano kasi medyo alam mo na no, sanay ka na na ah hindi kayang-kaya nating i-handle 'yan. You just go to the right doctor. Ito yung kanyang uh, etc. Kayo ma'am, paano niyo po kinukuwento? Paano niyo ini-encourage yung mga friends niyo halimbawa or yung mga patients na kilala niyo yung natatakot uh, you know, magpa-check? Ang hirap po sir kasi siyempre friend friend mo, mo siya friends mm-hmm. mo sila. Minsan mm-hmm. napapagalitan ko kasi <laughs> sobra na eh sabi ko kung kung maniwala kayo sa doktor niyo, kung maniwala kayo sa doktor niyo, yeah. gagaling kayo. Mm-hmm. Kasi sabi ko hindi ko naman ako magbibigay sa inyo ng doktor na hindi kakayanin yung whatever difficulty you have medically. Yeah. So mm-hmm. sabi ko maniwala lang kayo. Nandito na kayo sa hospital na to or nandito kayo nagpapakonsulta mm-hmm. sa doktor na anak ko kailangan maniwala kayo para gumaling kayo ganun po ako tapos kung 
yung yung ano nila, sickness nila kailangan ng magpa-surgery, pumupunta po ako mismo sa sa hospital doon sa room. Binibisita ko, ini-encourage ko na gano, let's pray together and let's um uh, ano because God will help us when we pray. Sabi kong ganon. At saka, mararamdaman mo kung masama na talaga yung lagay mo, hindi ka na magpapaumpira eh. Because God oh. gives us that that uh, connection to Him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe in that, na we have a connection with God, we connect, then God gives us a few days to to for us to really understand what we have to do before we go so that we're ready, especially mm-hmm. spiritual. Ganun, ganun po ako, kaya medyo minsan, minsan uh, mahirap din eh. Kasi akong friends nila, kasi ibibigay ko sa kanya, ibabato ko sa kanya. So, mm-hmm. ba, no? Ang hirap minsan eh. Kasi explain ko sa kanya. Tapos pagdating ng pasyente, uh, sama ka sa loob. Uh, Mrs. So, Opo. sabi ko, hotel, hotel, or ano. Sabi ko, private yun eh. Mm-hmm. Pero, mayroon ako talaga magpapasama eh. So, I just mm-hmm. go in. Uh, I listen, patapos, pag ano, pag hindi nagtatanong, doon lang po ako. Pero normally, mm. magtatanong ko eh. Pagdating sa, sa bahay nila, tatawag pa sa akin, minsan isang oras, dalawang oras po. It's, I think, uh, because, basically, siguro kahit na medyo mataas ang temper ko, basically, people pleaser ko kasi ako eh. Kaya medyo, naaano din sa anak ko, kasi minsan, natutulog na siya, bibisingin ko pa siya. Mm. Dito sa bahay, ah, kung may pumagpunta. It's very difficult din. Kaya ngayon, naglalagay, buti na lang, nitong pandemic, kasi hindi sila pwedeng pumasok, eh, di ba? Mm-hmm. Sa bahay namin. So sabi ko, doon na lang. Kasi minsan, kahit natutulog, kakatok sa, sa room, eh, kung nandito mm-hmm. siya. Ganon. So, so, ngayon, ililimit ko na po sarili ko, eh. Na, hindi, dyan lang kayo. Tingnan yeah. mo kung mm-hmm. okay. Opo, magpa-appointment sila sa secretary, ma'am. Punta sila sa clinic. Mm-hmm. Sa, <laughs> sa hospital. <laughs> Oo. Doc Jack, anong mga, ano, mga rare cases? Tama bang tawaging rare? O ano yung mga before, pinakanahirapan kang i-handle na kinailangan mo talagang ipasa or, you know, to work doubly hard? Sorry, what was the last part of your question? Ano yung pinakanahirapan ka na kailangan mo nang mag-double time you know studying and working the case ah okay um so it's usually you know patients that are in shock honestly hindi ka talaga makatulog until ma stabilize mo sila so pag sinabing in shock um, ano itsura noon um so usually patients that are in shock for example because of uh, an infection bumagsak mm-hmm. yung blood pressure nila they're febrile they're tachycardic mm-hmm. some of them would even have um organ dysfunctions such as acute kidney injury, so hindi sila umiihe, ganon. Mm. Yung iba, nag-encephalopathy, so t- patulog-tulog sila. So, uh-huh. it doesn't sound that serious, no? When, you know, so what? Kung tulog yung patient. Mm. The problem there is, pwedeng magkaroon ng um, respiratory uh, compromise as well. Pwedeng mm-hmm. bumagsak yung oxygen ng patient kapag hindi talaga maayos yung airway niya. Especially mm-hmm. if um, the infection is affecting the lungs of the patient and there's pleural effusion for example so all of those could complicate the situation and there is no um there is no perfect regimen for you know everybody everybody mm-hmm. has to be individualized in terms of their management in terms uh-huh. of what they believe in also mm-hmm. because i've had patients who are jehovah's witness so you also have to respect your wishes nila even mm-hmm. if you know, in your in your gut, you know that kailangan talagang magawa tong procedure na ito. I cannot go against their wishes. So that's how it always starts. Um, whenever I would um, explain the management to the patient, I would always start with, I'm not forcing you to do this. But mm-hmm. according to studies, uh, the best possible outcome can come from this type of management. So okay. again, it's not guaranteed as well because you know certain interventions, even surgery, has its complications. So that's also something that um has to be explained to the patients. 
yung mga ganitong cases, paano to? Nadadala mo ba to sa bahay? When you drive, when you go to the mall, to rest, to have your me time, naiisip mo ba nakatulog na ba yung patient na to? Uh, okay na ba yung kalagayan niya? How do you try to uh, put a boundary, a limit? Kasi parang 24-7 silang may nararamdaman, di ba? Yeah. Um, actually, when it comes to that, it's really hard to separate the two because, you know, um, binibigay kasi namin yung, yung contacts namin or for mm-hmm. me, example, okay. I would give yung email ko sa mga patients ko. Mm-hmm. So that way, they can contact me whenever they have, for example, an emergency or uh, a follow-up question. Mm-hmm. So I'm open naman to that. Hindi ko naman kasi sila pilit na mag-consult and then magbayad na naman just for just for one question kaya okay. um uh, when it comes to separating work from home or from leisure that's a little bit difficult yeah. honestly because um you know like for me uh, kapag may admitted ako na patient talagang iniisip ko okay na ba sila pwede ko mm. na ba silang pauwiin again if unstable pa sila you, i can't you know get them off of my mind honestly yeah but you know i would just Uh, take a few minutes, you know, watch a watch a video just to um relax a bit, and then good to go again. Okay, thank you, sir. No yes, ma'am. Experience ko sa birthday ko. Hmm. Seventieth birthday. Apo, oh, itong wow, July. Super. Kasi we were there in a nice island, and then may tumawag doctor dito, may jo critical na yung patient, so we were having dinner. Katapos, mm-hmm. sabi ko, doon ka na lang kasi parang hindi mo kakakain na dinidiscuss niya yung, yung sa pasyente kung ano uh-huh. gagawin. Mm-hmm. Sa, sa mga anak ng pasyente. Mm-hmm. Medyo difficult talaga, sir. Kasi mm-hmm. imagine, I was celebrating my birthday pagkatapos gano'n. Eh kami lang yun. Tatlo. Okay. Mm-hmm. Tapos may pumasok na gano'n. So, medyo talagang affected ka kung doktor ka kung kung nandoon yung pagmamahal mo dun sa patients mo. It's like kung may namatay, minsan pumupunta pa kami sa punerarya really? para makilamay. Mm-hmm. Opo, may, pum- may pinupuntan po kami. Mm-hmm. Lalo na before the pandemic. Ngayon after the pandemic, wala na. Kasi medyo nakakatakot na. Pero grabe po yung, ano, yung con- connection Yeah. Oho. Uh-huh. Sa sa pasyente na gano'n, mm-hmm. na trinay mo talaga pagkatapos hindi mo inaasahan ni eh, kasi may mm-hmm. ano naman na medyo magaling pang tingnan no. Yeah. Tapos mm-hmm. bigla na lang nawala. Hmm? Talagang ma- malulugmok ka. Mm-hmm. So kasama ako sa nalulugmok. Kaya, okay. Nandoon <laughs> turn in oh, sa oh, akin. Yeah. Oho. Uh-huh. Ano ba yung feeling kung nalugmok? sa ganun, mm-hmm. dahil pasyente mo. So, nakita ko po yun, na-experience ko. Ganun. Opo. Uh, Mrs. So and Doc Jack, ano, minsan, papasok ang patient, magkukwento, uh, sometimes they wanna, they don't wanna proceed with the, uh, uh, with whatever's to be done, ano, kasi ang dami nilang iniisip din, ang dami nilang kinoconsider din. Um, paano nyo yun? Paano nyo sila kinakausap na i-push nyo or i-post nyo and then balik kayo pag okay na? Um, it really depends kasi sa situation ng patient. For example, oh. stable naman po siya. Meron lang siyang gallstone na asymptomatic mm-hmm. naman. So, mm-hmm. hindi ko naman pinupush yung pasyente ko na magpa-opera. There are certain uh-huh. indications talaga na talagang there's there's just no way around it. Like, kunyari, yeah. nagkakaroon na ng inflammation, yung, yung gallbladder, or there mm-hmm. are complications like pancreatitis, or... Mm-hmm. Um, cholangitis and definitely um, kailangan magpa-opera yung patient yeah. um, kasi there's antibiotics won't be enough mm-hmm. uh, you really have to remove that part of the the patient for the patient to be able to recover and again that's where consent comes in sinasabi ko katawan nyo po ito okay. um, wala pong pwedeng gawin sa inyo na ayaw nyo po mangyari mm-hmm. pero again galing sa pag-aaral po namin, um, ito po talaga yung magandang outcome po na lalabas kapag ginawa po natin itong management po na ito. Meron bang pressure yun sa inyo na for you to also stay healthy all throughout? Oh yeah, definitely. You have to walk the walk as they say. 
um because it's really difficult to advise your patient to stop smoking when you yourself you know you're smoking so parang mm-hmm. at the same time you have to set a good example um so especially when it comes to the diet nga ng patient kasi it's uh, something that technically they can control eh pati yung exercise mm-hmm. ganun so um uh, parang you just have to lead by example because if not they won't see the effects on their own doctor how would they um believe that it would have any improvement on them mm-hmm. tama do ano ang mga doctor yes ma'am mag ano lang to ako doon mag comment kasi normally sa kanya before before she prescribes medicine sasabihin muna niya dito muna tayo po diet muna tsaka sa exercise Mm-hmm. after a few a few days na wala ang uh, nakikit wala kayong nakikita na improvement because of diet and exercise uh that's the time I will prescribe the medicines you know mm-hmm. which nakakatipid po pero yeah. normally syempre sa, sa mga experience ko gamot ka agad ang user nandiyan bilhin mo na yan pero yun lang po yung kagandahan sa anak ko diet muna, exercise muna, lalo na yung mga mm-hmm. ano, high cholesterol. Mm-hmm. 'Di ba? Diet muna, exercise mm-hmm. muna bago tayo bumili. Mm-hmm. Kasi tama naman eh, wala kang wala kang gagawin na na maglalabas ng pera kasi kinontrol mo lang yung diet mo mm-hmm. imbis na isang plangga kanin, 'di bawasan mo nang kunti na lang ganun tapos yung mga uh, mataas ang fat content di Opo. tanggalin mo tapos hindi ka lang palaging nanonood ng TV eh mag magwalking man lang ganun para ma, ma ano yung lahat ng kasu-kasuan mo ma-exercise ganun do sino mm-hmm. na yung mag mag maglakad-lakad ganun Opo. po yun ganun po yung nakikita ko But also mm-hmm. at the same time, when it's already indicated that there's no wiggle room anymore for just doing conservative management, talagang magprescribe na ako ng medication. Uh-huh. But it also has to be supplemented with a healthy na lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Doc Jack, ang doctors ano? Meron din silang uh, administrative tasks. For example, if they're part of a hospital like you, ah, uh, kwento man naman sa amin yung experience mo sa mga recent medical missions that you've uh, had. Oh yes, actually we had a recent medical mission in Pope John Paul last October 21 mm-hmm. and I believe we served over 100 patients. I'm still waiting for the final tally. And um at that time we also offered 20% off sa mga labs namin and of course this was a good opportunity to be able to uh, meet our new potential patients again to educate them. Um, especially in the field of education, we conducted a lay fora, um, mm-hmm. actually by our very own surgeon, Dr. Astorga. Um, it was focused on breast cancer awareness. So, naturo andin yung mga patient paano mag breast exam, when it's time to um, consult the doctor, what a mammogram is, so things like that. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Doc. Mrs. During, Soka, yes, ma'am. During the pandemic. Uh, I send some patients to you uh, through online diagnosis. It was, it was a lot, actually, while you were studying uh, to become a gastroenterologist. Was it a lot to you? It is... Um... That's actually why I don't do online consults because I always um I always have this part of me that uh doubts that I made the complete diagnosis on my patient because I was not able to do any physical examination. Mm-hmm. There was no um I could not listen to the bowel sounds of my patient if the patient is uh, complaining of cough if the patient already has pneumonia and they're in sila auscultate ganon that's why i would usually prefer to uh, see patients face to face um but there are instances when yung pinapakita lang naman sa akin are uh, 
laboratory examinations mm-hmm. that I can just um, explain on the spot. So it, it really depends on the situation. What was your most uh, daunting experience during the pandemic? Um, daunting. Um, I think the the only probably the only disadvantage during that time is that we didn't have that much cases in the endoscopy unit or patients at all mm-hmm. because um yun nga walang may gustong magpa admit and most of the uh, rooms if ever were occupied by COVID patients mm-hmm. so most of our resources were focused on that. So it was a little bit tricky also to be able to manage these patients because we also don't want to catch the infection. And there were a bunch of us who had, you know, um, mm-hmm. COVID scare. So that's that was always in the back of our minds, especially when some of us would still go home to our families. Mm-hmm. Mrs. So and uh, Doc Chuck, yesterday I was speaking to a former uh, DSWD secretary and then uh, Time Pony President Fidel Ramos. And then she was highlighting uh, three letter A's, accessibility, answerability, and accountability. Uh, of course, sa uh, public health sector, yun na pag-usapan namin. Sa private, uh, ganun din ba yun, Dr. Ja? Meron din kayo mga uh, values or character na gustong i-uphold? Um, definitely, we want to be compassionate on top of that, you know, empathetic, because um, we don't want to treat our patients as just, you know, like another statistic, you know. Yeah, um, we want to be able to not only uh, physically heal them, but also to encourage them, because that's also very important, um, especially for them to follow up with you. Um, mm-hmm. That's how, you know, nasa sense ng patient that they're in good hands eh, if you're able to relate to them, if you're able yeah. to understand their situation. It, you can't just be, no, it has to be this way. Hindi pwede kasing ganyan. Dapat you have to um, compromise din with your patient at the same time. Mm-hmm. May siso kayo, pag nakakita kayo ng mga taong nakapila, you know, just to avail of, you know, medical services or any government service na dapat sana meron sila. Uh, kamusta po ang inyong mga nararamdaman? Oh, medyo mahirap po kasi ang haba ng pila para sa kanila. Ganon, ikagaya kung sa private hospital, mas ano. Mm-hmm. Uh, lalo na sa kanya, she's usually on time for her appointments. Kasi dito sa bahay, sobrang strict ako eh. Kailangan on time kayo kung ano. Although I, I used to wait for her sa ano sa mga hospitals where she she trained Ganon, mm-hmm. kasi may pasyente pa siya. May dumadating. Ganon. Pero, pero talaga, kailangan mo lang mag-understand. Eh. Mm-hmm. Kasi, yun yung sa field niya. Eh. Mm-hmm. Kaya, hindi ako nagagalit sa kanya kahit apat na oras, limang oras, o kung ilang oras man ako nasa car, naghihintay, minsan mm-hmm. yung food niya mo, alam mo nga, nagdala ko, so bibili na ako, ako ng panibago. Pag, mm-hmm. pag sinabi niya, palabasin ako ma bibili na naman ako ng panibago. Gusto kong mainit yung kakainin niya kasi pagod na pagod siya. Ganon. Lalo na nung pandemic. Mm-hmm. Siyempre po, hindi naman bira siyang makauwi. So, pag magdala ko nun ng pagkain, uh, kailangan talaga uh, yung gusto niyang kainin para may gana siya na kainin. Yeah. Especially kung may patient sila na nag-positive. Tapos siya yung naggawa ng ano, procedure. Talagang pag sinabi niya, mama, ano, huwag kang pumunta dito. Hindi, gusto mo yung magdala ng pagkain. Gusto mo makita yung tsura mo. Malayo po, mga five, five meters away. Titinginan lang kami. Gusto ko lang makita yung mukha ng anak ko. Tapos iwan ko sa malapit sa guardia yung food. Ganon. Mm-hmm. Tapos pipikapin na lang niya. Ganon. Para hindi kami, wala kaming contact na ano na malapit ba Opo. so uh, ano naman po awan ng Diyos lahat naman po kami nakaligtas doon sa sa pandemi mm-hmm. ano I have one other question that I want to ask you uh, an an actress in the US very ano siya sa health was saying consistency in self care how how do you explain uh, that to people I think that um, 
from the from the phrase itself no you have to be deliberate in your commitment to your health so for example if we're talking about lifestyle if we're talking about your diet hindi pwedeng you know for a month mo lang gagawin and you expect to have um a good cholesterol for the rest of the year hindi ganon kasi it has to be a habit so that mm-hmm. you'll be able to um carry this on when you're older because as they say it's a little bit more difficult to change the ways of a patient kapag medyo matanda na siya Sabay and ako. yun na yung lagi nilang ginagawa so that's um that's what's important na consistency but also you start at a younger age mm-hmm. so kahit bata pa lang yung patient sinasabihan ko na o oh, ganito tumataas na yung cholesterol mo yung sugar mo umayos ka na kasi eh Uh, kung ayaw mo mag ano magkaroon ng mga complications if you don't want to take you know a lifelong medications you'll have to take better care of yourself mm-hmm. gaano ka bata yon yung mga kinakausap mong uh, ina-advise mo na ganyan oh uh, i would have as young as 15 15 wow sometimes so, yeah. kasi pa, ano anak ng pasyente ko okay <laughs> oh sila din ang papating <laughs> nagsabay na sila okay Mrs. So, I have yung my anak 13. ng pamangkin ko. Ah, okay, may 13. May 13 siyang pinu- uh, nagpa-colonoscopy. Opo. Oh, Kasi may ano blood stain sa Mrs. Mm-hmm. So, we have time and, and Doc Jack, we have time for uh two more questions. Ah uh, siguro ano po okay. Jack ano? Anong anong advice I, mo what naman? What motivates you? Yeah, sige what po. What motivates you when you are already de- uh, you feel depleted? Pagod na pagod ka na. Hmm, oo nga. Uh, what motivates me? Well, because it's a sense of responsibility, no? When you become a doctor, I have this patient actually who, who um I guess is impressed at whatever status I have. Mm-hmm. Um, being a young doctor, ganun, and and working as young as I am. Uh, and then she was saying that she wanted to be a doctor as well but i had to um advise her then so it's not just about the status it's not just about um having this nice clinic and seeing all these patients um it's this commitment that you have to have ingrained within you that you have to get up every morning because there are patients who need you um whether it's just for regular rounds because mm-hmm. um pauwi na sila importante pa rin na makita mo sila ganun um kasi i emphasize mo pa rin ito yung kailangan mong inumin na gamot ito yung kailangan mong kainin ganun uh, ito yung bawal mong activity for now siguro later on you need surgery so all of those things kasi would um would just come rushing back to me whenever i feel discouraged knowing that I, i i have a responsibility you know i really um committed to this role and i can't just um turn it off whenever i want but of course i would have these times na um i would have to slow down i would just maybe watch a movie or listen to music and then uh that usually um would calm me down and get me relaxed and you can do it all over again mm-hmm. and look at your dose And my dogs, yes. But my dogs kasi are here. They're not with me. Oh. Well, so she comes here to look at the dogs. Okay. And, and you, ma'am, of course, and, and the siblings. My my last question. You received a Young Investigator Award from from Japan during yeah. the pandemic. Uh, uh, what did you submit or what uh, what was the uh, contest that you joined to receive this award? I believe it was the Apostle. Yan po yan, sir. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, basically, Japan. it was... Sayang, a... kasi uh, pandemic, hindi kami <laughs> nakapunta para mm. mag-receive. Oh, hindi kami nakapunta. Hybrid Pinatala naman ito. kasi siya. So, it was fine. It was just a patient who had elevated liver enzymes uh-huh. and um, initially, we thought it was cancer and then turns out not to be... So it was an interesting case. So uh, apparently they agreed with it and gave me a, an award. But uh, of course, so I Japan couldn't. 
I couldn't have done it without the support of my consultants, Dr. Lustre, Dr. Chan, uh, and Dr. Janus Ong, who is a hepatologist. They guided me in uh, making the paper. Dr. Jacqueline, so be... Sayang po sila, hindi pa ako nakapunta sa Japan eh. Pagkakataon ko na yung sana. Abangan no, natin, ma'am, susunod. I'm sure maraming pa yan. <laughs> Dr. Jacqueline, so... Sana, sana nga, kaya ko pang lumakan. Kasi yun yung problema ko ngayon, tuwod eh. Kaya Kasi yan, ma'am. <laughs> consistent healthcare, ika nga, di ba? Mm-hmm. Yes. So, yeah, consistent talaga every day. We have to walk with Christopher... Stephanie, ganun. Kasi siya malayo eh. Ganun. Mm-hmm. So, namin siya nahihila. Ganun. Pero pag umaga yan, hindi pa yan gising eh. Kasi late na late na, nag-aaral pa siya. Ng mga, Opo. Ano na, cases ng pasyente niya. Ganun mm-hmm. talaga, grabe. Grabe siyang mag-research. Ganun. So, Opo. Pero, Dr. Jack, mm-hmm. nandiyan na siya eh. Nagpapasalamat na lang ako talaga na dedicated siya kasi mahirap yung ano pa lang eh, apartment, di ba? Mm-hmm. Pag medicine, parang lawyer, pag lawyer ka, kasi pag hindi, mamatay dahil naging guilty. Eh, ano naman pala siya, innocent. Opo. Kasi hindi na, i- 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 ano, hindi na itawid yung pag-depend mm-hmm. sa isang, ano, ito, uh, kliyente ng isang uh, abogado. Ganun. Opo. So, we're going to hold a medical mission on the 2nd of December at Pilam Function Room. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maris- Marasigan Function Room from 8am to 12 noon. So, can you say something about that medical mission? Um, so this medical mission um is actually targeting our um staff in the village, those who do not really have the means to be able to um consult doctors in private institutions, but also at mm-hmm. the same time are not able to um wait the long lines at the public hospitals at, at uh-huh. the same time. So uh, this way, we're able to um, provide medical care to these patients as well as to their families. Mm-hmm. And also sa senior citizens at saka yeah. sa mga children with unique needs. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, very good. Oh. Pag sinabi pong medical mission, ito po ay libre ang consultation. Ano? Tama po? Yes, libre yung consultation as well as a few medications. Mm-hmm. So again, huh, this is December 2. Oh, oh. Yeah, so December 2, dito na tayo mag-Christmas, umpisahan ng celebration. December 2, 8 a.m. to 12 noon. May pre-registration ba to, Mrs. So? Or pwede bang mag-walk? Wala po. I will give away mm-hmm. stubs. Ah, okay. So may stubs na po. Nakasama yan. Okay, so that's December 2, 8 a.m. to 12, uh, Philam Village, dito po sa Las Piñas City. So, Jacqueline, mm-hmm. uh, thank you, Mrs. So. Dr. Jacqueline, your final uh, reminder sa amin ano, and sa mga audience, paano ba talaga pangalagaan ng aming health, especially yung gut? So, uh, you know, the usual reminders naman po, yung smoking, definitely we have to um, do away with that as well as vaping. Uh, both ways po kasi wala talagang benefit sa katawan po ng pasyente especially those who have already known pulmonary na diseases. Uh, it can also predispose to cancers. Mm-hmm. Um, ideally, alcohol intake um, in moderation, pero kung pwede, wag na lang masyado. Um, tapos like I mentioned before, no, yung diet nga po ng patient. Um, if there is a issue when it comes to reflux, for example, kailangan small frequent yung meals. Uh, mm-hmm. portion control. Tapos, I would also advise my patient to enjoy your meal. You know, eat slowly. Mm-hmm. Minsan po kasi pag magbilis po silang kumain, edi eh, lamon, tuloy-tuloy. Tapos, by that time na parang tumigil sila, bloated na bloated na sila uh-huh. they have all these reflux symptoms already. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, um, when it comes to exercise, you can incorporate that sa hobbies mo. 
Like, for example, yoga, you can do it with your friends. So again, you're uh, fostering a sense of community at the same time, also encouraging your friends. And they can also encourage you back to mm-hmm. um, be consistent with that um, exercise regimen. Thank you, Doc. Uh, Engineer So, meron pa ho ba kayong gustong i-add as a final message? Uh, gusto ko lang po i-add in tal- sa, ano naman, sa mental health kasi we're also into that. Mm-hmm. Kasi, uh, as I said, I am on my sunset years. So, ang sinasabi ko lang, i-maximize natin yung memories, ng good memories, kasi magagandang memories would lighten us. Di ba? Sasaya, makita talaga yung sa mukha natin na ganon. I-enjoy yun. Pagkatapos, yung idealism, sometimes hindi maganda. So, i- i- ano natin yun? Bawasan ng konti. Tapos, enjoy lang yung life. Kasi talagang hindi natin maiwasan na may problema sa buwan. Like me, I'm so happy that I manage to overcome the trauma that I had gone through my life. Ganon, without uh, therapy. Therapy ko, sarili ko, nag, nag, nagdadaldal eh. Di ba? I, I talk to friends, I talk to those who are sick. Ganon. So, in a way, it helps relieve whatever pain I have. Even now, kung painful yung pakiramdam ng Nico, Ah, sige, Mag, mag-chat ako sa isang friend. Sabi, ano, usap mo na tayo. Sakit ng niko eh. Eh kasi, bira yung siya. May may pasyente. Hindi ko maano, ma, may storbo eh. Eh si Stephanie, nag-aaral. So, paano? So, pag wala, hindi ko sila makakontak. Eh di friends na lang who are willing to listen. O gano'n. Ah, ano na lang natin? Kasi pag... pag pag medicine ayaw ko eh ayaw ko ng painkillers ko talaga mm-hmm. if i can tolerate the pain i don't take ano ni pinamit or pain medicines ay, hindi ko po talaga so ako in encourage ko kayo take the pain just uh, try to li- listen the 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 burden in your heads kasi pwede naman eh kaya natin kontrolin kung gusto natin kontrolin. Tama? Kasi, ginawa na naman tayong strong with God eh. Para ma-overcome natin whatever difficulties we had to, to go through life. Because life is never perfect. Palaging mayroon na ano. Yung, tapos, lumalabas yung fortitude natin because na kaya natin. Walang mga painkillers wala kung ano-ano kung hindi naglalasing dahil may problema sa ganito sa ganya hindi magismo kasi gusto lang mailabas yung whatever pain they have hindi naman po kasi susunod masakit yung ulo mo magkakasakit yung atay mo yung lungs mo because of what you did so di ba o pag ganun lang kunting kwentuhan yung ma-45 ma- ma- ka because you did it on your own without all this hindi ko naman sinasabi sa mga doktor hindi hindi gagawin 'yon pero kung kaya mo pa para malaman mo rin gaano ka painful yung pain kasi tinatanong nila palagi mm-hmm. how is your pain 1 to 10 saan ka doon so kung hindi mo nasubukan yung pain talaga pero sa sa ano sa sa mga women who had children alam mm-hmm. na nila yung 10 eh. delivery ang 10 delivery mm-hmm. yung 10 sa ano sa mothers ganon so yun lang yung we can achieve a healthy world together with the doctors together with our dedication to self care maging healthy po tayo hindi toxic ang kapaligiran natin. Kasi we try our very best. We are into this together with our doctors, with the people around us, with our family, and everybody who are here to keep our world 
detoxified. Tama? Yeah, but at the Good same time, detoxify. pain is actually one way na your body is telling you that something is wrong. Mm -hmm. So um, I would encourage na you don't ignore it. You would still um, observe, you know, if there are aggravating factors, if there are relieving uh -huh. factors. Um, because that uh, it's really important when it comes to our history taking. From there pa lang, um, a lot of the times we're able to diagnose already our patients. So it's really important that they're able to quantify how the pain, uh, how painful it is, um, what type of pain is the patient experiencing, what is able to relieve them. And of course, um, not to just take over-the-counter medications just to uh, relieve themselves. Ideally, they are, they are to consult a doctor just to make sure there's nothing organically wrong with them. Yun po yun. Yung sinasabi ko kanina na titingnan mo yung pain mo kung kaya mo. Yun naman po yung pain na malaging, ano, minsan emotional. Tapos mm -hmm. yung mga joints ba? Kasi yung joints talagang nangyayari when you grow old eh. Yeah. Ganon. Mm -hmm. So, dapat maintindihan mo yun. Pero yung pain na let's say nasa loob, kailang patingin talaga kasi iba yung nasa loob eh. Mm -hmm. Pero mga ano, ano kasukasuan kasi di ba pag ano, may arthritis ka, ganon. So, If you're diagnosed already, oh, you know yun. what's wrong. Oo, oh, okay. yun. You know it's... Diagnosed na po. Yeah. Kaya, na ano ko, parang, syempre nag-worry siya kasi doktor siya. Bakit hindi ka nagsasalita? O yun, gano'n. Pero, syempre, ikaw naman, dadagdagan mo pa yung burden niya, mabuti na lang, tingnan mo sarili mo. Paayusin mo yung sarili mo, sumunod ka ng mahirap. Mahirap sa nanay, <laughs> minsan sum Pasaway din ng mga nanay eh, sa, sa yung doktor. Uh, Pinakamahirap daw na pasyente doctors Kasi alam nila eh. Sunod mm -hmm. na pinakamahirap parents. Tama? <laughs> yeah. Yun, okay. Ganun. We just make it as a laughing ano, stock na we can discuss. Pero talaga tutuloy po. Opo. So maraming salamat po sa inyong dalawa. Uh, Doc Jack, uh, Mrs. So. So minimize pain ano, and maximize happiness. This is Lifelong Learning with Engineer Ophelia Emso. I'm David. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you so much Thank for you. allowing me to interview you. Ganon na uh, itong nanay mo eh, uh, crowd pleaser talaga mm -hmm. kaya medyo mahirap sila eh. Kaya hindi nila pinapayagan maging politician. Hmm. Kasi mahirapan daw sila. So yun. Ganun po, ganun lang ang buhay. Let's try to be nice to each other, being kind, and uh, showing our concerns to others will give us better lives and long lives. All right?